You're watching Detroit on Deck. Here are your hosts, Dave Sasseski and Josh Clark. What's up, Clarky? Dave Sasseski, Josh Clark, as always, episode 10, Detroit on Deck. Josh, uh, the Detroit Lions are still in the playoffs, and we're in January, the end of January, approaching birthday number 36 for me. I'll put it out there. It's all good. Um, 25, 36 going on 25, right? So that's the way we do this. <laughs> um, but hey, the Lions are still in the playoffs. It's amazing. It's the first time in our lifetime we've seen this, right? So coming off a big win against the Rams, um, that was exciting. It had a little bit of everything. Matthew Stafford um, played out of his mind. He had a brain injury. It was scary late. Um, you also seen Tyler Higby have a, you know, career threatening injury. I'll say he should be back. It's, you know, it's an ACL, but like, you know, you never know with injuries like that guy just signed a, a couple year deal. Um, it was a clean hit though. Let's just say what, what it is. It was a clean hit by Kirby Joseph. You don't like to see those hits, but it was clean. And then today you get, well, yesterday we had the comments from CJ Gardner Johnson. Now, Josh, you haven't heard these yet, right? No. Okay. So, so this is Gardner Johnson. He says, I, if you give that Tampa group a good quarterback, that's a great group. Uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, that's a great group. I played against them for real, but they just need a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So Baker responded and said today, um, well, uh, Russell hasn't played for us all season long, um, but you know we hope to see Russell back. So I don't know what he's talking about there. But then said because Russell Gage hasn't played all season long, you know Gardner Johnson, good player, but he probably needs to catch up on his game film then. So <laughs> just throwing a little bit, you know, tit for tat, just a little bit of talking. Um, yeah. I know we're gonna differ on this, Clark, just because. I've seen you play sports. I know. I know we're gonna differ. I don't like talking. I don't like the talking before. I don't want to put any bolts and board material up there. But you like it, don't you? Oh, I love it. I'm all, I'm all about the bolts and board, bolts and board material. Uh, like you said, oh, I've been competitive my whole life. So I mean, I love any uh, nuance of the game, and you know. Before, after, during, you know, the trash talk's always fun. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Big shocker there. Okay. Well, hey, Baker Mayfield playing out of his mind. He really is. I mean, if you take – if you swapped in Tom Brady for Baker Mayfield in terms of stats where they're at right now, it would be really close because um, although Tom's a GOAT, I'm not saying Baker's a GOAT, but I'm saying they're playing the position just like Tom was. I mean, he's really playing flawless football right now. Um, and everything's going their way. I mean, if you watch that Eagles game, the Eagles were not winning that game, and you, you kind of found out really early on. It was like the life was out of that sideline. Um, you had Dallas Goddard calling his quarterback the B-word, um, which is the second time that's happened this season. A.J. Brown did it earlier in the year. Right. There's no motion on that offense. It was just like, all right, we're going to play street ball, throw it up. Without A.J. Brown, you're not winning that game. Listen, Devontae Smith uh, played some good ball, but, like, got to have some more players, right? Yeah. So, for Philly, you knew it was kind of doomed. But, I mean, even the defense, even the defense for the Bucks was pretty is pretty impressive. And we know there's some names on that team. Uh, Vita Vey is one of the better defensive yeah. tackle in the game. Levante yeah, David. Levante David, Devin, Devin White. Yeah, they got a lot of good players, man. So Carlton Davis, third. Like, man, they got some they got some players over there for sure that, you know, with Super Bowl experience. So Right. And and Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is yeah. listen, man. Say what you want about Todd Bowles. The man knows how to draw up a defense. Right? So I think that's gonna be one of the better defenses we played in a little bit here. But speaking of Todd Bowles, Clark. What happened this week? Uh, 
So I, I find it very funny. It's very, it's, it's nothing to do with the game really, but a reporter, a reporter goes on and ask him um, how he has been preparing his team to uh, deal with the uh, inclement weather that we're having <laughs> here in the state of Michigan. Yeah. That 15 and, to 20 second walk into the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. He, oh he yeah. There's a the dome. Yeah, he, yeah, there's a dude. Like, it was funny though. Like, the lady, like, I think she was just shell shocked. Like, oh, there is. Like, <laughs> it was just, it was, it was funny to see. Like, I was watching the presser kind of live, so it was like, uh, I yeah. can't believe she's, really, I can't believe she's really asking this question right now. Like, as a reporter, you should know like what teams play where and inside or outside of what. <laughs> you should. And I, listen, I'll, I'll, I'm on both sides with this. I work in news, so I know how it works. Sometimes with bigger events, they'll send a news reporter. To that to cover hey gets because they're used to interviews right to the presser however you got to do your homework come on yeah. we, we played in a dome for going on what 20 years something yeah. something like that we played in a dome before we played in a dome we played in another dome right. <laughs> we've been yeah. in a dome for like i don't know 50 Ever, years forever. forever like it's right. been forever so you should know but she she looks silly now, Todd Bowles, being a, a great guy that he is, said uh, he basically literally says, um, no, it won't be a big deal. Like, like you realize yeah. we play in a dome, right? So he's like, I, I can't. No, it won't be a big deal for the 20 seconds that it takes for us to walk in there. So she looked a little silly, but hey, we got really got so much time, so we'll move on. But um, on that Lions game, we always look at the quarterbacks. Last week, it was Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, and there was a storyline there. Really, there's another storyline here because these are two quarterbacks that people gave up on, right? Two two guys that people gave up on. And, and Baker, a number one pick in the NFL like Jared Goff, two number one picks overall. So then you look at them and you're like, okay, they've, all, they've obviously been at the, the peak. Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl. Baker Mayfield was killing it a few years ago with Kevin Stefanski and the Browns, and then they've been at the bottom. The year after that, both of them struggled. Baker was kind of just filling in where he could. The Rams, you know, coincidentally picked him up, gave him a shot. Right, Panthers, right. And then um, he can't – yeah, you forget about the Panthers, right? But then he came to this situation that he's at right now with the Bucs and Josh, he's he's fit in perfectly, and he's he he's back to where he was. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, he's definitely playing some some probably the, probably the best ball of his career. Um, honestly, that includes his you know playoff run with the Browns a few years back. Yeah. Um, I think I think you know the big thing for him is unlike his days in Cleveland, he has some weapons there in Tampa Bay with Evans, who you know he's obviously getting older. Chris Godwin, you know. Um, then, you know, you look at the running back situation. Rashid White has been, I'm not going to lie, he's better than I expected um, since, since he's been in the league. Um, he's better than expected. Um, and like you said, a good team always has a solid defense to fall back on, and that's something I don't think he really had in Cleveland where they had some, some players, but not like a whole defense the way the Buccaneers do. So, yeah, I think uh, – He's playing some of the best ball, and he's definitely, you know, putting front offices on on notice for when he becomes a free agent. Oh yeah, and then you look at you, you talk about this that receiving core: David Moore, Trey Palmer. They got some yep. guys, man. Yeah. That's some guys that really are under the radar, but um, they do not run the ball great. Okay, now Rashad White is a great receiving back. He does not rush for a lot of yards. The Lions, what do we do best? We shut Jumped down running run. backs. We did last week. I mean, Williams was shut down for the most part. Got hurt. Detroit, that's one thing about Detroit. I'm going to give them props for, Josh. Who's been more physical in the playoffs than Detroit? Detroit has yeah. looked so physical. They've been all over the field. I love it when I got our safeties, our secondary, selling out and, and tackling the way they are. Okay, you want to say, oh, well, they're dirty. They're going low. Where are they supposed to go? Where right. are you supposed to go? You go high and you get flagged. They did exactly what they needed to. So that well, talk that's, is that's, garbage. Well, that's one thing too, though. Like that Kirby Joseph hit. Like people, people have been calling that a dirty hit. Like I'm sorry, I've, I've played football 
And at a young age, you are literally taught to tackle just like that. Put your head down. Textbook. Drive with your feet and wrap around the legs. Like exactly. it's literally, it's literally where he hit him. Like it, it turned out to be a freak accident, you know, freak injury, whatever. It's part of a physical game, though. It doesn't make it a dirty hit. No, no, it was a textbook tackle, and the same thing happened a few weeks before, prior to T.J. Hawkinson, and that's why yeah. people are like, "Oh, they want to start the narrative of our our safeties are dirty." No, they're not. They right. know how to play good it, football. And it just happened to be another tight end, too. So it's like, okay, are they headhunting tight end position, yada, yada, yada. No, they're just, you know, freak accidents, freak injuries. They happen. It's part of a physical game. Let's move on. There's exactly. No, there's no story there, in my opinion. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think for Detroit on the other side, um, listen, it was really more of the same. It was Aiden Hutchinson. And then it was like, who, where's the rest of the pass rush? And nobody else, right? Right. I mean, there was just too many times. Matthew Stafford looked so comfortable back there. He was making, like, no-look passes, you know, yeah. hitting guys pinpoint. I will say this about the defense, though. When they needed to make a stop, they made a stop. Yep. So, that's all you, and that's all you can ask for in the playoffs because it's going to come down to, like, you might give up 35 points in the playoffs, but guess what? It's only going to come down to that one stop. And that's, right. Can, you know, can your team or defense make that one stop when need be? So, and, you know, in this game they did. Yeah, they did. I mean, they played tremendous. Looking on the other side of the NFC, um, the Packers, obviously, they won. They beat the Cowboys. It was just announced today. Mike McCarthy will return. Um oh. God. You know, well, I mean, there's, an, there's another year of winning the division and not making it all the way. See, that's around. the thing. It's it's tough for them, though, because they've won. He's won 36 games in the last three years, but he doesn't win that big game. But Dallas hasn't won a big game in quite a while. It's been a long time. So they always seem to stumble. They always think they have the quarterback, but it's neither here nor there. My point is, is they're out. Green Bay is going to be playing San Francisco. I thought in order for Detroit to have a good shot, I wanted to play Dallas. I think there's no chance in God's green earth that the that the Niners lose to the Packers. I just don't think there's a chance. Your thoughts? No, I 100% agree. I mean, if Jordan Love plays the way that he did, they could definitely keep it competitive. Right. Um, but, yeah, overall, the Niners, to me, the Niners, I don't care. Like, they lost to the Ravens, sure, another Super Bowl contender. I still personally think the Niners are the best team in the whole NFL. Um, and that I goes agree. Back, and that goes back to just because their defense. Man, their defense is filthy. Now, they have the best player in football, in my opinion, Christian McCaffrey. Um, Brock Purdy is finally coming into his own in year two or year three, whatever he is now. Um, yeah. Debo, Debo's actually, you know, healthy for a full year. Kittle was fully healthy this year. Um so, I mean, they, they have pieces everywhere, and they're just a nightmare to match up with. Now, you look on the AFC side, I think uh, on that side, I think it's going to either be the Chiefs or the Bills. And I think right now with the way that that the Bills are playing, I think that they got a clear shot this year. This is their chance. I know a lot of people are going to say Patrick Mahomes and those guys, but I think the Bills have a chance. I think that Josh Allen has been playing good football for the most part. He hasn't been giving up too many turnovers um, because he's going to do that. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, the problem I think they're going to run into, if they run into a problem, and I know you think they're going to win, but if they run into a problem, it's going to be because of the lack of receivers. They have got a clear issue there, and they have all season long. No, I mean, I agree in a sense. I mean, Rasheed Rice has came into his own, you know, for most of the season, so they definitely have a receiver there. Now it's just can you get Travis Kelsey back on track to complement yeah. what, Rice, what Rice has been doing because Kelsey, if anything, has had the down year. Um, oh, yeah. And, and then that's crazy to say because he's only 16 yards shy of 1,000. So. Well, and he's close to – he's got 93 receptions. So it's like – and, 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 wow. and, and he missed two games. Like he was held right. out week 18. He was held out week 18, and he missed the opener against the Lions. So – like. I feel I don't know how you feel, but like I am tired of them showing Taylor Swift every five minutes. So it's a nah. It's just, I, I I enjoy I enjoy I enjoyed I seeing her swag. I enjoyed seeing her swag surfing. I, <laughs> swags, yes, like that was that was embarrassing. Swag surfing. The Chiefs love that song, man. Yeah. They they get hyped with that yeah. song. So <laughs> I 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm down with it. I, I like I like seeing the sideline like that, showing some energy. Andy Reid. Yeah, teams, no, back, so back, back, back to the conversation of the Bills yeah. and the Chiefs. I just think the Chiefs are their kryptonite. I, I, I do expect the Chiefs to win this game, even though it isn't, you know, good old Buffalo for once. But, I mean, the elements aren't going to play a big factor. They're used to the cold. I mean, Patrick who, Holmes has, Whoever yeah. wins that game, I think, comes out of the AFC. Oh, 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. But you have to also understand though, too. The Texans, man, they're hot right now. They're just a bunch of, of young kids. They're, they're just it's a, a great bunch of story. Young, they're, they're just a bunch of young kids who don't know any better. So that's that's, that's, that's sometimes that's good. So yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I do expect the the Chiefs to win that game in a close game. Yeah. Um. I mean, you you mentioned the the Texans, and we've talked about C.J. Stroud. Um. But really, a, a guy that's come out of nowhere lately is is Stingley. Stingley's been playing great football at LSU. I mean, Derek Stingley, it was like one of those guys, when they drafted him, it was like on potential. Didn't play a lot at LSU, hurt a lot. Um, But he was named like the defensive player of the week, the last week of the NFL season. Um, Had like four picks in like three games. Was really playing good football. He's continued to do so. That defense obviously had two pick sixes against Joe Flacco, which he's prone to that, and they were from behind, so yeah, it was going to happen. Flacco, the real Joe Flacco stood up. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, he did for Cleveland, right? Yeah. And then his coach at the end just really didn't help, in a, help him at all, said, hey, we appreciate Joe, but we're going to move on with Deshaun Watson. And you know what? Everybody that's going to be honest with themselves says that's what they need to do. Because he's a better player. Flacco was a filling guy. Good story. Good story. He came off the couch and filled in. Nobody, none of us can do that and do what he did. But he's he's done. He's done, and it was a good story. Uh, we are at that halfway mark, Clark. So um, I do want to get back into some NFL. But first, why don't we go over to Michigan? Um, we got some returners some on the safety side as well, returning for the Wolverines. Tell us about it. Yeah, they're basically returning uh, to Makari Page announced yesterday that he's coming back. Will Johnson, we knew, was coming back. Rod Moore announced that he's coming back. Um, That's Keon huge. Sa- Keon Sab, who was a reserve this last year, he's coming back. We'll put, probably slide into you know, that number two cornerback spot opposite of Will Johnson. Um, so those, those are definitely some huge uh, – huge pieces to bring back and then along the defensive line i mean they're probably still going to be the best defense in college football with this news but i mean they're bringing back josiah stewart kenneth grant mason graham who were three of the four starters last year on arguably the best defensive line and then you bring also bring back Derek moore and ray sean benny who i expect to be the fourth guy man i'm just saying like if you you know it's a little early to say like repeat or whatever but listen we can say this they're going to be in the conversation because well yeah and they haven't even began their homework yet on the portal you know they're going to hit some oh, runs the they portal. have to i don't think they go into the season with orgy as their starter at quarterback i don't think so personally um maybe but well it's, it's between orgy and uh the denegal i think i see yeah that. orgy was a three star coming out he did some good things and i like that they got him on the field Obviously, all of his packages were running, um, but he it was nice to get him on the field, get his feet wet in the big moments, and I, and I like that. Um, I think that there is a real chance that Jim Harbaugh returns to Michigan, and I wouldn't have said that a couple weeks ago, but he's done some interviews. Um, but he, what he, the big thing for Michigan and Harbaugh is this. It's not money. It, that's not the disconnect. It is if there are NCAA violations – he wants yeah. to make sure he is not being fired. He wants protected. And I don't blame him because the violations that he got over a hamburger are minuscule, right? Come on, man. So yeah, one of them are minuscule. So I definitely I definitely agree with his, you know, his stance there. You know, like, hey, if you want me, I'm open to returning. But like, hey, I've served my time. You you know, you got me for six games last year. Let's right. move on. Let's be behind us. You know, if you want me as your coach, then let me be on the sidelines. Yeah. If you don't want me as your coach, then you know, I'll gladly jump to the NFL. Yeah, and, and you gotta look at this. COVID year, they go two and four. Okay, they they he took a pay cut. Now he won a national championship. No more pay cuts. Pay the man yeah. what he deserves. He did what he needed to do. He returned you to prominence. Um, it's been a long time since they won a national championship. Michigan is the national champion of the country. Like that, you didn't just win the Rose Bowl. That was huge. Yeah. No, you got a national championship. So I think that'll be big. 
Um, speaking of national championship, I don't know if you saw this, but um, with Kalen DeBoer going to Alabama, they're losing a lot of dudes. There was, yep. there was like, I think they said there was like 22 guys entered the portal. So it's like, yeah, we Alabama's excited about that hire and everything, but like these kids are like, we don't know who that guy is. We were yeah, here for Saban. Yeah, and they lost a stud today to the portal and Caleb Downs. You know, they're starting safety. So, you know, yeah, that's going to be a big gift for whoever gets him. You got to think Michigan's got to be in the conversation at least, yeah. right? Yeah, Michigan's probably in the conversation. Ohio State's probably in the conversation, which sucks to say. Georgia's probably in the conversation. Right. Because you know he wants to continue to, you know, be on top or close to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of cu- I'm kind of curious if, and I won't go off too much on this, but do you think they even – you know, picked up the phone and, and, and dialed up Dabo and said, hey, what's your interest? Because they moved on that real quick. And and I know they have to do recruiting, but they moved quick. Yeah, no, I don't I don't think they picked up the phone and called Dabo at all. Because if you had a chance at Dabo, Dabo should have been your guy. Agreed. But I from you know what they say, a couple of people said no. I don't know. It was a little little shocking, but uh what I would uh, I, I want to touch on a little bit as well and we're not going to talk a lot about them but hey the pistons won again the other day on mlk day um they got some young guys playing there was a quote that came out recently in a presser from um head coach williams and he said well the organization talked to me um and they basically are they're basically forcing his hand and playing jordan ivy at the point they want the ball in his hand and they want Jaden ivy i'm sorry um Jaden ivy um, heck of a player, kind of been on and off the court with this year with like, okay, we're playing him a lot. He's starting, he's coming off the bench. It was like early on, he wasn't getting minutes, but they, they said they want Jaden Ivey playing the point with the ball in his hands. I like it because I think you saw what Cade looks like with the point, with the ball in his hands. He had too many turnovers. I like Cade. Cade's awesome. He's fantastic. They made the right decision at that draft. In my opinion, over over green, um, but Ivy is a young guy, and I think he could be a star as well. At least get you around 15, 20 points a game. So I like that move, and I think it'll help them um, long term. I think you're going to have to make some, obviously, some roster moves. They did cleared some space the other day. We were talking about the trade that they made; it kind of went under the radar, um, but it did clear some space, and maybe they can bring in somebody. Um, a free agent, you know, they're not going to get Pascal Siakam because he got traded to the Pacers today, which I, I want to get your, your opinion on playing Ivy, but also I want to get your opinion on Bruce Brown. Just He's just signed there, and now he just got traded. What, what's going on there, man? Yeah, I mean, basically he, he was a uh... – an expiring contract, I guess, because he did have a, a team option, I guess, for this next year. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't see the team picking that up based on the money they gave him. So it just made sense to kind of throw him to Toronto, you know, for yeah. for Siakam, you know, kind of in a, for a, you know rental for a rental type of player deal. But I mean, we did give up three first round picks as well, two of them being in twenty twenty four, and then one in twenty twenty six. A lot. So. That's a lot. Then we also gave up Bruce Brown and you know Jordan Jordan Wara. So you say we yeah. people don't know you're a Pacers fan. Yeah. So yeah, you know I'm a, I am a Pacers right. Fan. So yeah. but I, I mean big costs, obviously a big ask from the team. But Pascal Siakam is an All Star. He's had a good year this year. Um, I guess go all in. Um, I wouldn't like it if I was a fan just because you're giving up some of that future, but I see for, for me personally, as a fan, I don't mind giving up the 24 picks just because I think this is one of the weaker drafts in recent memory. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind giving up these, these two first, first round picks. Cause I mean, based on our record right now, I believe those picks are going to be in the twenties anyways. Yeah. So it's not like you're getting a lottery and a surefied, you know, stud, like, you know, Victor Wimbanyama, you know what I mean? You're just getting a rotation so, guy, maybe, you know, right. A guy who potentially won't even make the team because I mean, we're loaded all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, so it's like, and, and we're young at that. So like, do we really have room for two more guys who are young without experience? No. Yeah. So, so why not trade those pieces for, you know, a perennial all-star like Pascal Siakam? Yeah. I mean, I like it. And then your thoughts yeah. on Ivy. Oh, yeah, me and you, we talked about this basically since, like, game 20. Um, 
that we 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 agree. Jaden Jaden Ivy is best with the ball in his hands. We've seen what Cade can do with the ball in his hands, but we also know what Cade is without the ball. He's a cutter. He's a slasher. Um, he come he can come off screens, knock down shots. Like we've seen that, right? Um, and he did a lot of that in college, specifically slashing to the basket. So it just makes a lot more sense, honestly. And I think it's going to open up a lot more shots for like Bogdanovich and mm-hmm. you know Joe, Joe Harris if he ever you know sees time. Yeah. So I think I think I think it's going to benefit. I think it's going to benefit in, in the long run. Maybe not this year. Obviously, they're thirty-two games under five hundred. But you know, in the <laughs> long run, in, in the long in, in the long run, you know what I mean? Like I'm with I you think, there. I think, I think it benefits them. It's crazy to say thirty-two games under five hundred when you're not I, even when you're not even halfway through. The yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy, and and I won't go deep into this because we got five minutes here. I want to talk about Jared Goff, but the last thing I'll say is it's crazy that you say we're like thirty plus games under five hundred and we're not playing Joe Harris. I just don't understand that. This guy's a proven shooter. He can he's a bucket walking. He's a three and D guy. You need guys like that. Um, makes no sense to me, but yeah, I agree. they have their own plans. Wanted to switch uh, our conversation and kind of end on the Lions as we started with the Lions. But a lot of love lately for Jared Goff. Um, he's played some good football. That first down to ice it. Um, he, St. Brown, we don't say enough about him either. He's incredible. He's incredible. He had another great game. David Montgomery I'm run, ran I, great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to ask St. Brown. He's the best receiver in football. I mean – Here's the thing. You need to make a play. You need to get a first down. Yes. There's, now, there's, no, if, there's if, nobody more sure-handed than I'm on Ross St. Brown. And he, he's only getting better every single year. This is year three now. Every single year, he's dramatic, I, drastically, he's drastically improved. I'm going to say if I need a big play, I'm throwing it up to Justin Jefferson. But if I need a sure-handed guy and he'll get a first down, I'm on Ra is the man. But the conversation is Jared Goff. You know, he, he played great football. That was a low-possession game, too. I think Detroit got like seven or eight possessions. It was nothing. It was not a lot, right? Because it's playoff football and that stuff happens. Um, and it came down to the end, and it was it was nail biting. It was tough, but Goff stood in there, made the plays. Detroit had the ball with, I believe, around was it four minutes, and they just drained the clock yeah. out. David Montgomery, quite a bit of of carries. They kind of went away from Jameer Gibbs. Wasn't a big fan of that. Montgomery came through as he has all season long, but I would have loved to seen more plays drawn up for Gibbs. But the conversation right now is Jared Goff. Do we sign this guy long-term? And we'll talk about it more as the weeks go on, but give me one reason why we should, Josh, and one reason why we shouldn't. I mean, the reason why you sign him is the experience. Um, two reasons why you don't. He can't throw the deep ball, and he's going to be expensive as heck. See, that that's the one that scares me. And it's 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 actually both of those. One, the development of Jamison Williams is being hindered here because yeah. he's hitting all these like so, I mean these short routes, ten yard routes. Jamison Williams is a thirty yard play waiting to happen. I he's mean, a he's, a he's a deep guy. He's, he's, he's a grand slam waiting. To right. He could he could have big play. he could have four catches in a game and and have over hundred yards. That's the type yeah. of guy he is. But with Jared Goff there, he's going to have four catches and 26 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just there's something missing there. I love Jared. I do. And what he's done here, it's it's been great. But I just don't know that this organization is completely sold on him long term. Short term, maybe the next one to two years, yes. I was going to say short term, definitely they're sold on. Oh, that I mean, short term, but two to... years. But I'm saying they're not going to eight years deal, eight year deal with mm, Jared Goff. No, absolutely not. And you have to think his age is plays a factor there. He's 28, 29 years old. Right. So, right. I mean, that's definitely playing a factor as well. But you also have to make sure that you're doing your homework on quarterbacks. And just right now, I don't think there's anybody better out there that you're going to get that can replace him and step in and keep you a proven, you know, perennial. You know, division, you know, winner, you know, like you won this year or, you know, come playoff time, a, you know, competitive team come playoff time. Um, I think golf gives you that best shot for the next one, two, three years until you find somebody that's out there. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see him sign. Josh, we're down to our last minute and 15 seconds here. Detroit Lions. They have to do what to get the win? Um, I mean, just like anything, they got to run the ball and they got to put pressure on the quarterback. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's really it's that straight, right? Because to in me, my it's that, opinion, to me, it's to me, it's that simple. What a lot of people don't realize outside of like Detroit, maybe Tampa Bay, is like when they won in Tampa Bay back in week five, twenty to was, six. Yep, twenty to six. We didn't have James, or we didn't have uh, Montgomery, we didn't have Gibbs, we didn't have. But, but what did Jamison Williams do in that game? Right, deep ball passes. Right, we didn't have <laughs> you know we didn't we didn't have branch in that game. Like we were missing some stud players, and we were still able to you know put together a great game plan and beat them with our third string running back and Craig Reynolds. Yeah, man. I mean, I think uh, Detroit ha- definitely has a shot in order to do so. They got to get more pass rush outside of Aiden. Um, that secondary keep playing strong. Would love to see a pick from C.J. Gardner, especially with him talking a little bit of smack, um, Clarky. It's 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 going to be a good game. Um, any last words for you? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's close. Come Sunday, I think this is a double. I think this is a double digit point win. I think of divisional rounds. I think this is the. I think this is the most obvious game to to pick. And I think it's the Lions by fourteen plus points. I love it. I love it. Well, it'll be fun. Uh, we'll be watching um, this episode. Uh, we are obviously happy to be partnering with um, OCTV now. Um, this episode is airing Wednesday, but it's going to air Saturday for OCTV. Um, if you like the content, make sure you keep tuning in. Um, we're going to be on all platforms real soon, uh, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, we're going to be on there, so we will get that out to you. But we'll be back on Saturday. Um, we got we got a lot to do. Some some NFL picks, and hopefully uh, we can talk some Lions going into Sunday. Uh, Clarky, it's been fun. We'll see you soon, brother. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.